Welcome back to the channel today for Midlands Outdoors where in this one is another special episode because we are going to be journeying down the Starbridge Canal all the way to Dunsley where the tunnel is and a bit of a train line bit down the bottom which I can show you which is really interesting. So this joins right by the side of me now we've got the bonded warehouse of Starbridge which you can see the old former 17th century storage uh, unit building where they stored taxable items such as tea, tobacco and spirits in bond but you just see down the corner now we have got the the canal basin just by the side of the bonded warehouse where they actually used to load all the goods through to put onto the barge and send it across the canal so I'm going to journey a bit further down in the bonded warehouse you just date so back a bit and it was derelict in the 1980 and restored by the Starbridge Navigation Trust in 1986 I believe so it was derelict for a few years before it was actually redeveloped into the way it was today so that is actually the Starbridge Navigation Trust buildings I mean those are really old as well but I bet those date back quite a bit but let's have a look down here we've got some more interesting little things on the Starbridge Canal uh, you've got some side buildings here there is actually like a little office building which still remains and you just imagine what the canal used to look like when all the industry was going but this is interesting though just in the corner because this actually used to be one of the rolling mill uh, factories just in the corner here you see where it's been all gated off but this is actually one of the old support beams for it which you can just see the old, only thing what's remaining of it and you see how rotten and uh, rusty that uh, support beam is going but there used to be like some like metal things stretching all the way down there used to be some poles on the bottom and it, I think it used to be to the joint to the side of the bonded warehouse so I will pop the photo on now so you can just see that for you but it's just crazy how industry changes though I mean from here and just to see that it's pretty really cool so yeah what's interesting about this uh, canal section as well just on the side we have got the river Stara which joins the section of the Starbridge Canal just in the corner and of this flows all the way to where we're going to past the uh to the dunsey section i think it follows all the way across the canal line down there and it actually ends up in the river seven at starport now this is actually journeyed its way from hell's Owen into here to starbridge and it's got a bit of a more journey to get to starport really but it is a, a very long river and it does date back quite a bit to when the canal was here as well but you see this bridge which is going across there and this is actually where the factory used to be down here I think it could have been something to do with rolling mills but I know there was another big one just in the back on the corner which I'll show you just in a little bit it's really interesting it's got a bit of history behind it especially with the bridge which is on the corner but you can just see just on the corner here we have got some old steel columns and walls for when the factory actually used to be there look so yeah this is actually one of the offices for the factory which was here many years ago and you can see it's actually still remaining now it's pretty cool just to see it it's, it's strange what I've knocked the old lot of the land down but kept these offices it's looking up there you can just see the windows up there the green the green windows back in the black country days I do know because the coal mine down by me as well most of the buildings and paint used to be green you can obviously see the guttering underneath that is green as well under the corner the windows I believe the doors were green here as well and there was something behind that I did know why they used green paint back in those days a majority of the old factories and stuff had green paint the factory that I went to down old the old that even had green paint on it as well it's just it's pretty crazy to see what they used and the colours back in those days but just imagine what went on here I mean the, the production of whatever they made at this part but the rolling mills over there we have got the Holloway and Co just over there more rolling mills what used to be further at the back which is now flat land i believe they are building houses over there i believe but it's interesting just to see what what was here many years ago so i thought i might have mentioned all this for you because a lot of history 
over here with the rolling mills and especially bonded warehouse and the factories which were over the back. So yeah, I do want to mention to you, it says the Starbridge Town Arm Canal spurs from the Rosie Junction off the Starbridge Canal to link the Staffs and Worcestershire Canal route. It terminates almost in the centre of Starbridge at a wharf upon which the bonded warehouse was built in 1779. The building was originally a simple two-storey brick structure approximately 20 feet feet wide and 70 feet long with the interesting feature of a semicircular east end. The bonded warehouse held taxable goods such as tea, spirits and tobacco in bond until an importer redeemed them by paying an appropriate level of excise duty. The barred windows and heavy barred doors of the warehouse bears the witness to the high value of goods once stored in there, which you can see the, the bonded warehouse derelict in 1970 to 1986, quite a date back there. And it says in 1986 it was restored by the Starfish Navigation Trust. So yeah, as I mentioned, the main reason why I've come down to the Starbridge Canal today is one of my favourite walks. I've done this many times before, it goes so far, this canal does, you can just keep walking and keep walking, but you need the time, that's why I have set out about half seven in the morning on the bus to get here for about eight o'clock. It gives me the filming journey so I can get what I can get and tell you some history along the way, so it gives me a bit of time. But it's beautiful, darling, the more you walk, the further you get into the countryside, you just want to keep walking and walking. It's just, it's just wow. The stuff you see as well, spot it's much wildlife down here. Woodpeckers and the uh, the kingfishers are beautiful to spot down here because I have spotted up the lisos as well. But you do get the kingfishers down the Starbridge Canal for many of you who didn't know that. Actually, I think it's down by when you get to the end of the Starbridge Arm, the canal arm down here. You turn left to go to Stoughton. If you keep going down there, you will actually come across like a bit of a wooded area. I have spotted them there where Bell's Mill Fishery is. Two of them uh, feeding in one go, but they obviously see me as I walk further on and I spooked them. But if you're lucky enough, you will spot some really good stuff. So like I mentioned at the start, the Holloway & Co is just over there. It is a grade listed building once more. And you can see there was actually factories situated on the side here going all the way down there was a big factory on there it's just crazy how it's all been destroyed and knocked down to flat land now and they are planning to build some kind of houses on there and a big housing estate on the back land where the rolling mills was as well over the back that is all flat it goes far over the distance so you can imagine how big the, the estate is as well uh, but that is really interesting i have been in there but it's obviously fell down due to weather conditions the way the building is as well and how old it dates back but it's interesting just to see what we still have here but that one over there if i just get around the corner by the bridge i will actually tell you more about this one this one is really interesting so yeah this is actually the grounds of foster rastrick and company so it does date back to a date of 1828 and before that now the company here which is still a remaining building today if i can get close enough just to show you it's imagine how old the building dates back though it's it's just nice just to see that they've done something about the building and i've always walked past this and wondered what it was but there is obviously a new build there on the corner but that bit there is the most interesting one compared to the photo there which you can see foster rastrick when it was abandoned that big building just in the corner but it says there in 1828 the company built only four locomotives but is notable for the building the starbridge lion in 1828 the first locomotive to be tried in america this and two others delaware and hudson were sold to the delaware and hudson canal company which you can see one of the locomotives which is the starbridge lion just right there which is actually built in 1829 i think it is 1829 or i do know the Anganoria was built in 1829 which you can see in 1829 they built the Anganoria for the short end railway Anganoria was probably the first to use mechanical lubrication for its axles unlike the first three he had a long life and at the end was presented at the london science museum in 1884 it is now the national railway museum in york so john bradley and co used the foundry building for a hand rolling mill 
until 1982. Sydney Smith Castings then took over until Operation Seats in 2004. But it is once more just lovely just to see the building of the old Foster Rastrick and Company. So right there at the back, I will give you a bit of a better cinematics than that, which you can see the old thing at the front of the window. If many of you know what this was like when it was derelict across the canal and you come down and you've seen that. But it's just it's just nice to see that it's being used today for something well worthwhile to be fair instead of leaving the building to go in a bad derelict state so imagine today if it was still here derelict it would probably all be caved in by now but it's lovely to see they've restored it helped the, uh, the the brickwork at the front to make it look brand new but it is again using the old structure and architecture how it actually was nothing's changed about it apart from the inside so yeah really lovely seeing that i mean i do love seeing old buildings there's many buildings across the local area which is still there, abandoned, not used, a lot of factories. It's just coming across them to spot them. They are there, but many people don't realise. But for that one, that's really interesting to see it's actually being used today though. There is an abandoned building just at the back over here. It's been there for many years. Nothing's been done with it. There is actually somebody living on the land though, but you used to be able to get to it. I don't know if that actually used to belong to the the Foster and Rastrick company. It could have been something different altogether, but it's literally just right over there where I'm looking. Now I will show you a bridge down there in a minute. I'll just sit down and tell you about it. Now the bridge, whether you recognize it when you're going down the corner, is actually John Bradley and Co bridge, which was uh, cast at the Colbert Dale. Now John Bradley and Co was formed in 1800 by John Bradley, the managing partner together with financial backing from Thomas Dukes Collier, 1761 to 1846, and the trustees of Henry Foster, John Bradley's late stepfather, who died in 1793. The business of John Bradley & Co was to convert pig iron into raw iron for use in the local industry. From 1807, William and James Foster, stepbrothers of John Bradley, took equal shares in the Foster holding of the company. Thomas Dukes Collier resigned from the partnership in 1810, and William Foster left in 1813, leaving John Bradley and James Foster as equal part uh, in John Bradley & Co at this time. John Bradley died in 1816 at the age of 46, uh, leaving James Foster in the sole control of John Bradley & Co. James Bradley uh, managed to expand the company into coal mining, oh well, as iron manufacturing and enhanced reputation of the Bradley & Co as manufacturers of good quality. So. John Rastrick in 1819, which became known as Foster Rastrick & Co, ties back into the other history which I just mentioned. So yeah, that's pretty much all the interesting history for this local bit now, which you can see one more, the factory which is, used to be over there. John Bradley and Co Bridge. If I just look around the corner, you can see just there, cast at the Coalbrook Dale uh, in 1873. John Bradley and Co. Look at the, look how old the bridge is all together. You can just see the the cast iron at the bottom, and how rusty it's going as well. But the bridge was actually here when the I mean, even the factory was disturbed the back, and it was actually being used. There is underneath. I did see. I don't know where about it is now. Well, let's go a bit further down there is something really interesting on this side i believe it's down that corner there is some sort of a uh, tunnel going right underneath it i don't know actually where it leads to uh, maybe it went into some factory side and i don't really quite know but it's, it's just lovely just to see the old uh, cast iron bridge which is on the corner so yeah i don't know if many of you have noticed this when i've I've walked down here many times, I've never noticed this like, little arch tunnel going right the way in. I don't know how far it goes in or what it was actually used for, but you can just see down there. I know it does go a bit away in, to be fair. I don't know what's on the other side of it. 
I'm gonna look, see if it goes on top or something. Yeah, it looks like it is a tunnel because it's obviously filled in with soil on top. Needs to the depth of that one compared to down there. Maybe canal barges went into there many years ago, possible chance, but it just looks a bit too narrow for boats to even go through it. Off the height of the roof, I don't quite know to be fair what that is all about down there. But interesting once more just to see something that was hiding. I've never noticed it. So yeah, making our way now to the canal side cone, just on the corner down the bottom, junction cottages, and then we'll be making our way even further across the Chubbs Bridge. I think it's Chubbs Bridge then junction cottages. And then we'll be making our way then to the Stowerton section of the canal line. Not too long to go. It is a nice little walk at the moment. I think it is blocked off at a certain corner, so we might have to cross the road, go straight down and join back onto Chubbs Bridge, then resume our history just on the corner down there. But lovely morning, we are starting to get a bit of wildlife as well. Got some uh, water birds just on the corners. I can hear some birds into there as well. Nice there, seagulls. And uh, enjoy the, the bit of cinematic. So yeah, it's making me wonder, somebody, there was a sign down the bottom, I didn't actually read it properly. The canal side is actually blocked at one point. Now, it's looking at down here, it's looking at what this bridge is called in a little bit. Well, I know this one is old, the majority of the bridges down the Starbridge Canal date back again, late 18th century. A lot of the Dunsey Tunnel as well, that is really interesting, I will show you a bit of history behind that one. But most of them down the Black Country, about 1800, early 1900, because you can tell by the way the brick is built. But I think this is actually a new section of the bridge which is coming up. This bit down the bottom, I will show you underneath it. So this is Colborne Brook Bridge, which is underneath. So if I look underneath it now, you can see that the old brickwork, which is right here, look, right, it arches under. This could have been the original bridge, just right here. This is actually a new building extension to the bridge, which you can see. I've seen newer concrete compared to that one. This probably dates back to the late 1800s, I believe, because you can tell by the brickwork and now underneath it, it's pretty much decaying really bad. Can you tell how old it is altogether? I'll say 1800s for this one underneath. So yeah, this is it just down the corner. You know, it looks like a load of factories just down the bottom and they are really old because Looking down there, there are old loading bays for when they loaded goods onto the barge. But there is a big cone just right in the middle, just so the back one, which I can show you a better shot. There's a little bit if I get a better view. But they do date back quite a bit. And obviously, Starbridge was popular for its glass making industry. There was quite a few glass makers around Starbridge itself. And I will now go over and tell you a bit of history about it. Yeah, just getting a better view you can just see the just the cone right in the middle over there so you can obviously get a better view of it you can see it by Chubbs Bridge just in the corner if you're far back by Junction Cottages over at the back of Chubbs Bridge you can just see the back the top of that there is an information board down there but it is pretty much really cut off but it does say for centuries glass has been manufactured in the Starbridge area reputedly started in the 17th century by French glassmakers from the Lorraine region 
They were attracted to the area by the rich natural resources of coal and fire clay for the lining furnaces, making it the perfect location for the industry. Between 1830 and the, and the start of the First World War, Factory Wordsley and Thomas Webb and Sons of Ambercote and Stephen and Williams of Brawley Hill introduced a great variety of new styles of glassware, including cut, uh, etched and graved glass, uh, cameo work and uh, rock crystal and a whole kaleidoscope of exotic colours. Quite suddenly, Starbridge became not only the leading glass centre in the UK, but a centre of international importance, rivalling Venice and Bohemia. There is a bit more information, it says the golden age in Starbridge glass came to an end with the First World War. From then on, the factory rise con concentrated increased on the production of cut crystal glass. This was exported around the world and for most of the centuries proved quite a profitable business. Over the last 20 years, however, a combination of rising production costs, increasing competition from abroad and a decline in popularity of a cut glass has devastated the industry and Thomas Webb's, Webb's Corbett and Stuart Crystal have all closed. Now you can just see just down the bottom down here, there is like little tunnel arches just going right the way underneath. Some loading bays just right around the corner will show the ones just down the bottom and the barges would have loaded goods, brought goods into the industry from these sections just down here. That's why pretty much there are glass companies in Starbridge on the canal line so they can get the goods all the way across and into the industry much more easier back in those days. And there is more glass works, there is one on the canal side if you turn right down the bottom where the junction is you will find more glass works just down there. It was a really prosperous industry for Starbridge back in the Black Country days but it's just interesting just seeing the old remains which is just still here today just on the corners so yeah, this is actually quite the last section of the uh, the works and there is actually not an hole in that one there it looks like the pigeons have been getting in and out but you can just see the old loading bays just here which have been bricked up and wooded up against just down the bottom corners look just down there you just imagine when they actually loaded all the goods onto the barges from these sections so yeah, that's pretty much all this section covered. Let's go and take a look at the, the bridge, which is just down the bottom, and uh, junction cottages. So you can actually see the canal has actually been uh, drained, just down the bottom look, all the way down to the bottom down there. So I believe it is actually just down the back where we've got to get back onto the canal line, past the bottom of uh, junction cottages. But, you can see, that's, that's just cool to see how, how far it's been drained out. It doesn't look deep altogether when you look down there, but it definitely is when the water's into the bottom of the canal. But it does mention onto here though, so if you are planning to come down the Starbridge Canal, it does mention here to where it has come from, Chubbs Bridge, which is just right on the corner. You have to get onto the Repose Road, which is on the corner there, go down Rush or Close, then back up to Audridge Close, and then it should be a corner there leading back onto it. So let's go and have a walk down there and let's go and rejoin back onto the canal line. So yeah, these are actually junction cottages just right on the corner. Just down the bottom down here, look what you can see. No, it does say uh, these cottages appeared in 1829 and represents the last and much change of the canal side community. Besides the cottages, Ordnum Brook passes beneath the canal to join the River Stour. So that is pretty much really interesting well, just to read a bit of the history and a bit of the dates behind the junction cottages which are right on the corner. But now join back onto the Starbridge Canal, we shouldn't be too long to get to the next section, which is just literally just right down the bottom down here, and then we've got a turn left.
yeah, I'm going to have to say, this is one of my favourite walks across the Starbridge Canal, where it goes all the way to Stourton, because it's really quiet every time I've walked this, you don't get many people come down this section, and the wildlife is absolutely everywhere down here, there's, there's wild birds, I can see robins, blue titch, and if you're very quiet, you can hear the birds singing. There is just so much. I've even seen the jay just go across the tree, just right up to the top. It is amazing. This is actually where I spotted the kingfisher by Bell's Mill. Now, just looking across down there, all I was doing was scanning the, the local area down the back where the trees are. And I just seen the kingfisher dive right away, and I thought, oh, what's that? I didn't even realise what it was until I zoomed in on my camera. Absolutely fantastic just to see the, the wildlife, which is hiding down this section of the canal line. If you've just sat here for like hours, you probably spot quite a lot. So yeah, we come up to uh, Bell's Mill Bridge. Now this one, it does look old as well, which you can tell by the brickwork. Probably say early 1900s, late 1800s when this uh, bridge was actually built. The majority of the old bridges, like I mentioned at the start, are built with this brick. And you will see the, the majority of bridges which are going down this canal section now are made out of this brick section. But underneath it, you can just tell by our road and it is underneath and underneath there as well. I don't think it is actually too long now to get to Stourton. We've got about one, one and a half miles away, I think, or probably more than that, a little bit. So two or one and a half miles away to get to Stourton from here. It isn't too long, but when, when we get there, I will see the, the nice view of the, the little dam system which the River Stour is going down by. Um, Stourton, the section down there. It is lovely. You can fish that bit, and believe it or not, there is supposed to be fish within the Stourton section of the River Stour. I have been down there once and I've caught a chub down there, just down the back of it. So I don't know what it's like now, whether you can get some decent fish caught there, but the pollution from the water, surprisingly enough, it's, it's crazy how you do get fish up from there because it does link in from the bottom section to the River Severn. So yeah, I have got a bit of information about Stourton, which is obviously says on there in Staffordshire. So Stourton is a hamlet in Staffordshire, England, a few miles to the northwest of Stourbridge. There is a fair amount of dispute over the pronunciation being pronounced Stourton, Sturton or Storton by different people from the area. The nearest sizable villages are Wollaston and Kimber. The nearest hamlets are Presswood and Dunsley. It lies on the River Stour. The Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal and Starbridge Canal meet at the Stourton Junction, which places Stourton on the Starport Ring, a navigable waterway popular with narrowboat holiday makers. So going down a little bit right now, it does say Stourton is situated either side of the A458, at the junction of the A449 between Wolverhampton and Kidderminster. The name originally related to the area of the River Stour is now applied as an, including the area east and south of the river, which was formerly the township of Halfcott. The Stuperny Inn was formerly situated at the crossroads until it was demolished to make way for housing. Stuperny remains the local name for the location. Because many people say to me, have you ever been to the Stuperny? If any of you ever mentioned to you, have you been to the Stuperny area down Stourbridge? That's probably what they're mentioning is the, the name for it, which is uh, Stuperny, which is nearby. So they call it the Stew Pony. You have got a uh, Stourton Castle, which is nearby as well. So it is there, uh, believed to be a me medieval hunting lodge, dating from the reign of King William II. Stourton Castle was evidently the king's houses in Kinver during the reign of King Henry II. It was called a castle in 1122. By that time, the castle was the manor of Kinver and Stourton, together with the custody of the forest of Kinver were held by uh, John, son of Philip, at a fee farm rent of £9. 
The king resumed possession of the manor in 1293 and granted it back to John, probably the other grandson uh, for life. The king granted the keepership of the forest to High uh, Tyrell in 1339, adding the manor in 1340. Uh, but the property was in wardship from 1343 until the majority of another High Tyrell in uh, 1362. Following the death in 1381, the property passed to Richard Hampton. He passed down his family until the death of his great-grandson, John Hampton, in 1472. So there is a picture there. I'm going to post a photo on for you now. This is what you can see from opposite the River Stara, just right on the other side. It is really interesting. The castle and manor then passed to George, Duke of Clarence, who in 1475 gave it to Tewkesbury Abbey. Who, so yeah, there is quite a lot of information on the Starrison Castle. That's why I stopped, because I'm going to tell you a bit more uh, when I get to the bottom of there. But I'll show, it, I'll show you the view of it from where the weir goes down. It is a nice little view. You can see just around the corner now the uh, Bells Mill Fishery just down there. So you can just get a bit of a look of it. I mean, it is, well, it does look like a nice uh, fishing place. I've never been over there because I do love my fishing myself, the carp. And I believe there are some nice, uh, decent sized ones you can catch into there. And at this time of year, though, you're looking towards March, it's probably the best time start getting out there and uh, carp fishing but they do look really lovely I might have to give those a go what's still by me though is having the Starbridge Canal which is here but just down the bottom this is actually where I spotted the second Kingfisher and I was just walking down now I kept my eye on the left and I just seen it dive out the edge it was actually just where I'm pointing where that tree is right there and I was zooming in with my camera and I've just seen it by random. Now you can spot it from time to time, then you would have to walk very slowly down this canal section to try and spot it. I mean, I haven't seen nothing at the moment walking down today. Never know, I could see it on the way back down later. But I haven't got my main camera with me today, so it's going to be a bit hard to spot it. But they are lovely birds, I could sit there for hours watching kingfishers. But as far as I might tell you, there is quite a few down here. It is such a beautiful morning now, as I've got even further down the canal away from Stylebridge. But you can tell down this section, I mean I've noticed the last time I came down here, that the Stylebridge section seems to be wider than what it is when you get down to Stylton. So you can just see this section here, it's a bit narrow, it doesn't seem to be as wide as what it was. And obviously you've got all the reeds over there in the corners. But it is still a lovely part of the canal and sometimes I've been down here and the water is so clear when looking through you can actually see the fish and the best time to actually do this is in the summer so when you're walking down all the Starbridge Canal is really clear especially when you come in by the Bond Warehouse the Starbridge Arm that's really clear down there sometimes as well you can spot the fish it all depends on how clear it is from the barges so it depends if you get barges coming through on the day if you don't get none for a few days then this really does go clear it's really amazing to see but yeah, it should be just a stroll around here now and we should be coming to a couple of locks and into Starrington itself. So yeah, just a little bit of a walk down. I've actually noticed this before. There is an old decayed barge which has been left here many, many years ago. You can just see, if I just look close here, look. Look how, look how decayed bad that is. I mean, the insides have really decayed on the bottom. They've actually collapsed all the way through. 
that's what it's actually flowing my water into it and obviously the back as well down there and then, I mean it's got I've been here for I don't know how many years because the road to rock that fast like that that's just that's just crazy I mean there is actually he said it was on sale for 250 pound needs slight work <laughs> you'd think who's gonna buy this really because I mean how bad the state is in the shape of it it's gonna need all new wood altogether it's just beyond repair to be fair on this boat but you can see just looking around here at the front I mean where the those nails are sticking out I mean those are rusty really bad and down there you can just see where it's rusted through look and obviously all decayed the wood it's crazy just seeing the barge was just left down the canal section like that that's just it's just crazy So here we are, we've made it to Stourton. It's literally at the Stourton top lot just up at the corner. I don't know whether the, the canal is actually blocked off still down the bottom, where it takes you to the junction and to the stew pony. But we might have to cross the road if it's still blocked. But I do remember coming back a few months ago and I was doing repairs on one of the locks at the bottom. This bit's nice here though, seeing like where the locks are and you're going down, it's just a nice little bit of scenery. Yeah, this is Stowerton Top Lock. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, look how steep down that goes. Down that little lock system down there. Just imagine how the lock systems work though. The barge goes in, it fills up the water from that side to make it come down so it can drop it down. And it, I think, I don't know how it works really, but it's a bit confusing when you think about it. But it does have to rise up so it can get the barge in turn. I think it drains all the way back down, down the bottom. So it drains through so the bar can get back level down to the next section which goes down the bottom but there is like a little interesting like pool which flows through to the down the bottom down there nice to see a bit of the architecture for like someone having that in the garden but yeah that's interesting there there is actually another section there is something draining down into the bottom which you can hear if you're very quiet you can hear it like some water like flowing through like a waterfall under people's gardens just under here going through to there it's a nice little bit of architecture seeing that but if i just go around i don't know whether you'll be able to see inside it but it does flow pretty much around the corner as you can see it through there i don't think you will be able to but i can just see it spurting down but yeah that's pretty much the the Stoughton lock section let's keep journey our way down and let's head to the stew pony Yeah, that was the uh, the Four Locks Bridge, which I just passed under. And I do believe that actually dates back quite a bit as well, where they constructed underneath that to lead into this section. There is a date on the bridge facing down if you walk down there. I can't remember what it says there, but I do remember a date. I think it was dating back uh, late 18th or 17th century. But just down here, there is actually some more locks just in the corners, just leading down to where the section splits off. So right takes you to Wolverhampton section and on the left takes you to Stalport. well it's a bit of a journey i mean if you do manage to walk it's pretty much preferable to get there on bike really because walking that it does take quite a bit of a distance the journey because if you have to add your journey to get back to where i come from it's definitely worth traveling on bike really because you can get far but yeah just a view of the, the locks you'll see we've had we have got numbers on the locks which you can just see number three look and just down the bottom down here there's like an overflow system as well just on the other side of this but that is actually the end of a Starbridge canal leading it now into the Staffordshire and Worcestershire canal which is obviously down the, the split down the bottom but it's a lovely walk the Starbridge canal section is one of my favourite bits from that section there but now on to some of the best bits now just down the bottom down here I am going to show you, if I get over to it, a little waterfall which is down the bottom 
by the Stourton, by the Stourton Castle. And doubt flowing down it is a lovely bit of scenery just to show you. And I will get a bit of a aerial footage of the canal here for you as well. Just down there. I can see Stourton Castle from here. Just over the back and see little views of it just over there where I'm pointing. So yeah, that's it, end of Starbridge Canal, which you can see now Stourton, that's Stourton bottom lock, which is Stourton top lock is where we're coming from. It's down there. So yeah, I do have a bit of information on the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal, which is right the way at the bottom where the two split sections are. It says the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal is a navigable narrow canal in Staffordshire and Worcestershire in the English Midlands. It is 46 miles 74 kilometres long, linking the River Severn at Stalport in Worcestershire with the Trent and Mersey Canal at Haywood Junction by Great Haywood. It says down here, so the date of act was the 14th of May 1766. The date it was uh, first used was 1772 and the date the canal was all completed was actually 1771. So the start point of the, uh, the section is the River Severn ending by Trenton Mercy Canal. So it does actually go pretty much a, a longer way in distance. It goes really far. You can just imagine the way it is right now and how it goes all the way from there up to Wolverhampton. So you've got the, the other sections and the old bridges down by Dunsley just down there, which we're going to be taking a look at. There is like old railway bridges and stuff by this, by the looks of it. So there is like, tells you all the junctions for the canal section. Pretty really long route. So yeah, I thought I might mention that. And the engineer for the canal was James Brindley. So some interesting history. So let's go make our way over the road. Let's go and check out the waterfall uh, next to the Stoughton Castle. A section just down here it does mention onto there Birmingham Anglers Association now I am with the BAA just up there look the signs and it is a really good section for fishing I don't know if it's this top section here but I do know below the weir which is just down by the Stourton Castle it is a great place to catch chub and other small fish just down there I thought I mentioned that because it is really lovely but this canal section here is obviously if you imagine where it splits off down that with your pool, I don't know how the fish are going to get up from the top of that into this section. Now I don't know whether there's any fish from this section down here. So, for my mind to that because it is really interesting. I have tried fishing here and caught nothing at all the once. But I don't know if, whether other people have. But yeah, just looking over there. There is actually Stourton Castle. A nice little view of it from here. You can get some great views. It's just amazing just to see that there is still things remaining that will date back quite a bit. And if you remember the history what I told you, down the canal section, and it's really interesting, I will tell you a bit more in a bit. I don't know what that actually led to down there, as you can see. So yeah, which you can see, the Stowerton Castle just right over there. I will tell you a bit of information now for you, a bit extra about it, so I'm just going to get off this. I'll just go on to here. So where I did finish off, it does say, the castle and manor were granted by Henry III to his uh, Attorney General, William Herwood, whose family owns the manor of Compton, also in Kimber. The castle then became a home of that family until the late 1650s. The present house was presumably built by Thomas uh, Werwood when he became entitled to the whole manor in the 1580s. His grandson, John Werwood, was probably neutral in the Civil War, but the castle was taken and briefly held by the brother of uh, Colonel Tinker Fox in 1644, and later surrendered to, to Sir Gilbert uh, Ger Gerald, the Governor of Worcester, after he 
rooted foxes uh, relief column in an action on Starbridge Heath. So there's quite a lot down here to tell you more about it. Now, from moving on away from that, you will find more information on it if you just type in Stowerton and up down on Wikipedia, it tells you about Stowerton Castle. Drop some links in the description for you on that, which is just right by, by me, just right over there. So we have got the Stowerton Junction, which is down here. The Stowerton Junction is the point at which the Starbridge Canal terminates by descending through locks to join the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal, where I've just come from. This historically important junction on the West Midlands Canal network was long disused, but the restoration and reopening of the Starbridge Canal from the 1970s onwards has inserted its importance. It lies a few hundred metres up the north of the crossroads at Stew Pony and is easily accessed by towpaths along can both canals, which you can see there. So you've got the Stew Pony, which it's mentioned something about there, it was demolished and redeveloped and there's loads there, this stew pony in. So mainly that's why many people call it stew pony because you've got it just right over there, just in the distance where I'm pointing to over the back. It is really some interesting history looking over that as well. But yeah, let's journey down, let's go and take a look at the weir just by Stowerton Castle. Yeah, this is actually the weir which is going down right now, just at the bottom which you can see. Lead north way to Stalport now and into the River Severn. It's got a, quite a bit of a journey to go just yet, but it goes pretty much far. And there is actually sources of life within this section of the River Stour. You've got dates, chub, there are some other little fish within here as well. I do know, because if you look on the BAA website where you can fish this section, it does actually tell the potential fish which you can catch within the section of the River Stour just here. Now, there actually has got quite a smell to it, and I believe. It is really polluted from the back end of the style section, the style there. I don't know if it's too polluted on this section here. I really don't quite know. But there is some sort of like sewage source leading by it down the back somewhere down there as well. It is really nice just to come and take a look at this. It's a nice little scenery of that and again Stowerton Castle, which is right away in the distance just over there. Here as well with this section of the canal line you can actually walk down and park your car just on the corner here and then you can walk down the stew pony section of the canal line and go even further but that's just the stew pony just right over there what i'm pointing to just on the corner 
Just there, just to get a better view of the Stu Pony Void. So the corner here, you can see this is actually Stu Pony Lock. Still on the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal. I believe it's uh, all this here, what I'm pointing to. There is actually a sign here on the corner telling you about the routes on the Canal and River Trust thing here. And you've got Starport on Seven, that's actually where the canal brings you out to by where the River Seven section is. I believe the canal is finding where it is. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. There's the Starbridge Canal, so it actually links into the River Seven from there, which you can see. There's Dunsley Tunnel, so we've got to head to that section. We're about somewhere up to here somewhere. So we haven't pretty much got really far to do go. It does lead into Cookley, and if you keep walking back, it is pretty much a nice journey as well down there. And there is much to see. So there is quite a lot of canal routes in the Black Country. So the BCN just right there, up by Dudley. There's loads and we are going to be checking out quite a lot throughout the year. So we're going to check out as much as we can on the canal routes. So yes, go and walk under the Stu Purdy Tunnel. We have got some more things here about fishing as well. So you got there, look, uh, Kimber Freelands Angling Club uh, day tickets on the bank. So I don't know if that's referring to the River Stour, which is joining us just in a little bit over the corner, or it's referring to this bit here, which is on the canal section. Do you know this is really good fishing section down here towards Dunsley. There's quite a lot of good uh, fish sorts that need to catch. You've got like much, I have seen carp down here, believe it or not, some big carp basket. And it's just lovely if you are into your fishing it's definitely a nice place to come down the street pony but the river stara down here surprisingly enough does actually have fish into it so the, when you're going down i think you can fish some section of the river stara down here somewhere but there is quite a lot within there going down this section but it is a lovely canal just all together though when you're walking down there it's pretty much wider down the section down here going to dunsley and there is little things if you look in the sides if i'm walking down there is like little sandstone caves within the edges now when you get to kimber you do notice there's quite a lot of sandstone caves down kimber there's quite a lot but i will be covering the bits on kimber soon i have got kimber church to cover uh we'll go and take a look at the little village just around there but i think it's somewhere down here i will show you something really interesting what i did spot my very last uh, walk that I did down here. I think it's a bit further down. Ah, here we are, Dunsley Tunnel. And this is actually one of the tunnels that I want to show you. It is really interesting. It has got a bit of history behind it to when it was actually built. I will actually find about a bit now for you. Let's go and journey our way in and show you what Dunsley Tunnel is actually like. So here we are, Dunsley Tunnel. I have got the history up for you in a second just to show you. But it is really interesting to see the way they've carved out this tunnel. It is really old. But look at that, Dunsley uh, number 31. And it's the, the old sign tunnel there. But you can just see the way it's been constructed out. Look, it is dating back to the 17th century. It's going through. You look how old the brick is in here. And all this dating back. I, mean, I think they have been doing repairs into here as well a little bit because it's, it's that old. Some of it's obviously collapsing. You can just see there where bits of it's come apart but going through you can just see the rest of it is actually sandstone there is a hole in the wall there i don't know if i get a bit of torch show you but there's an hole going right the way through look and it's going right the way to the back it looks like something's burrowed in there i don't quite know it's going up somewhere into there and you see the majority is all sandstone look flat looking through and all up there, the way this is carved up here, look. And all, how all that is, that sandstone carved out to the bottom.
But yeah, just on the other end of Dunsey Tunnel, we'll go back through one more time just to show you the way it's been carved out on the sections just here, look. I have got a date and it does tell you the date when it was actually constructed. So the Dunsey Tunnel on the Staffordshire and Watershire Canal was one of the earliest built on any British canal about 1772. It is only 23 yards long and unusual for a tunnel of its age. It has a towing path, which is just going right the way through here. But you just imagine 1772, they're out, how old it's dating back for this tunnel with the way it's carved. The way they carved it back in the days as well to get through this sandstone. But you can just see why they put the supports up to there to support it, to stop it from collapsing. I mean, because of how old it is altogether. But it's just amazing just to see a sandstone carved tunnel for the canal route. But yeah, let's keep journeying on. We've got a little bit of a walk now. Just down the corner, we haven't got too far. And I will show you the proposed train track, what used to run through there. And then we'll be heading back. But it has been an interesting journey just to come down to Dunsley. To come and check out this tunnel, because I am amazed of the way it's actually been built. There's one more pan around for you just to see. I mean, you can walk down to here. It's not too, too far. But I don't feel too knackered out, it's only about 11 o'clock now and I can't believe I've made it all this way already. But I think I'll just get to there and then we'll end the video by the train track. But let's keep moving on, we've still got a bit more to cover and uh, enjoy the rest of the cinematics before we get to there. But yeah, this is actually what caught my eye, if I just get a better cinematics just to show you. I don't know how far underneath it goes because I didn't look last time I come down the canal but you can just see just there look at that going through and that's what caught me on I wondered why is it supported onto beams why is it like old cave systems going all the way through underneath but then you've got sand you've got like support columns there it potentially could be just to support the edge to stop it all from collapsing the way it was carved out for the canal I don't really quite know if you know what this is past Dunsey Tunnel and you see like these holes with the support feel free to once more drop it in the comments I am interested to look a bit more about it but wow nice little feature just to come and take a look at across the canal line past Dunsey Tunnel so yeah so there's not too far towards where I want to show you the next section the train section is down the bottom down here but there is a lovely woodland just by the side, I will go and show you and going through it reminds me of like going through the depths of the forest of uh, Cannot Chase it's really lovely I have seen some wildlife into that, it's not fox last time I went through but it looks like there's a footpath going right the way through to it just over there in the distance so yeah it has changed since the last time I come down to it see the footpath going through it is a nice little bit just to come and take a look at wow so you can just see into it where the, all these trees would have been little and how many years have grown all the way up it's just pretty insane look at this so i'm gonna go right to the middle of it and show you i just love being in woodlands they're so lovely look at this and you see all these like pipes and you may wonder what these all are now these, when the tree, you can just see at the bottom look, when they were young and they've obviously, because the, the trunk of them is thickened out, good example of it is just this one here, they've all collapsed out look, just there, so they're battling to try and get to the light with all the different ones here, it's how tall and growing and how fast they're growing, there is a baby one here, just there, look at that baby one growing up. So yeah, here we are. I've been doing a bit of research because I wanted to know what this was all about and obviously knowing whether it was a freight train, what type of train was it because it went literally just right behind me within the woodland just at the back and it is actually called Kimber uh, Light Railway I believe. So let's have another look. Yeah, Kimber Light Railway. The Kimber uh, Light Railway operated a passenger and freight tramway. Oh, that's so I was right, so I thought it was uh, a freight something to do with fright um, between Amberco and Kimber in South Staffordshire between 1901 and 1930 
so you can see it dates back quite a bit long dates behind there so it opened on the 4th of april 1901 closed on the 1st of march 1930 it has a track gorge of three foot six inches uh, it was it was obviously electric, I believe. Propulsion system was electric. The depot was Hyde Meadow, Kimber. Uh, the route length was actually 4.19 miles, 6.74 kilometres. Bit of history here. Kimber Light Railway was a subsidiary of the British Electric uh, Traction. They acquired the Dudley and Starbridge Steam uh, Tramways Company in April 9, 1898 and applied to the Light Railway Commissioners in preference to the Tramways Act of 1870 for permission to build a tramway from Ambercote to Kimber. The tramway was a single track with passing places. The route ran from the Fish Inn at Ambercote where it had a connection with the Dudley and Starbridge and District Electric Traction Company. After passing uh, Wollaston uh, and Stowerton it arrived in Kimber. From Ambercote to Wollaston Ridge it ran on the streets using conventional groove rail. From there, the line used uh, Vignoles Rail, nine uh, grooved broadhead rail. The use of the uh, Vignoles Rail in conjunction with the tramway's tight curves led to Board of Trade Inspector impose a 10 mile hour speed limit and recommending the use of a single uh, deck tram cars only, while lack of signalling at passing loop prevented operation at night. Passenger service started on the 4th of April 1901. The company was taken over by uh, Dudley Starbridge and District Electric Traction Company. In 1902, for the sum of 60,000 equivalent to 6.6 .6 million in 2020, although parcels had been carried out on passenger services from the outset goods, uh, trailer vehicles were attached behind service cars for freight from September 1903. The company made significant money from this operation. Substantial quantities of milk were carried, so that occasional passenger vehicles were commanded for freight use. So you can just see there, the service is finished on 8th of uh, February 1930. A victim of competition from motorbus traffic and the final closure took place on the 1st of March 1930. So yeah, the train was actually situated just right behind me in the, the wooden devil there. So let's go and have a, a quick look and I will show you the old tracks which ran into here, just right at the bottom. So yeah, that the other, I, I can't believe I actually found this. I mean, I was going for like a little stroll and I thought, oh, I'll have a walk down here and come and see what it's all about because there was a path going in. Someone told me about an old cottage which was situated right over the back and I thought, I'll go and take a look. But it is actually situated here, just right on the corner. You can just see the old, uh, the old line which used to run down the bottom here. Now I thought it was a servicing station for the line itself, which you can just see how it goes steep down to the bottom. But it's looking down this one. This is it. You can just see the, the line, which is actually still here. Look at this. We've even still got old rail line, which is sticking out, look. And I've seen this and it, it just literally blew out of interest for me to, to research more about it. But you can see things going down there. Look, and the weight's actually going all the way down the bottom. So it could have been a passing junction, to be fair, because you've got the two sides. That's where the trains pass. But there is an old OS map, which I've seen in the past of an old train line which actually was running through it so that's what encouraged me to research about it very interesting to see that and that would have obviously run all the way to Kimber which is just literally not too far away from here but there is even more so you've got that bit there there is a bit there which is really buried into the soil and there is a bit of the line just about to here as well which is pretty much really buried right the way in look and you can just see that there as well so there would have been multiple train sections, one there, and uh, there is another one, just right there, look, just on the corner, you can just see the metal poking right the way out. But it's a similar story on that side as well, which, there's a load of, uh, used to be a load of metal sidings just over there, and we'll go back down and show you that one more time. But it's really interesting just to see that, and just see it's actually still remaining here with parts of it. But there is steps down there, which you can see are going right the way to the bottom. Maybe they could have serviced the trains here at one point. There could have been like a servicing depot as well for the tram, 
the tramway trains that went down to here but that is really interesting just to see that a bit of train track which is still visible and left today dating back to the early 1900s wow <laughs> But yeah, please feel free, go and hit the subscribe button, go and hit the like button as well. And don't forget, go and check out any other videos that I have on my channel. I've got quite a lot on there and that I've done over the years so far since Christmas. A lot of history covering the hours there and there, but I am planning to move on and go and do different areas, especially more of the black country as well. So we'll see what we have in plans for next visit, but that's Starbridge Canal covered. Might go further in many time later on, but you know Kimber's right only, only over there so it's definitely worth a walk one of the days but yeah thank you very much uh, and see you soon